Colorado just conducted its 10th spring practice, a little bit overshadowed by the transfer portal opening today. We'll get to that later, but we had a chance to talk to tight ends coach Brett Bartoloni, who moves over after coaching the receivers from last year. Got a pretty thorough update on that position group. Yeah, you know, and it's a bigger group than, than it was last year and uh, maybe one that uh, you know, has a little more depth at this point. I mean, we're going to see how some of that depth develops, but uh, certainly it starts with Shaman Mateo, who came over from Cincinnati and was highly productive there. And, you know, they actually have real healthy tight ends right now as opposed to receivers that are playing tight end. So now they do have defenders, defenders playing tight end, but, um, you know, that's part of that depth, right? And they're, they're bigger bodies. And so um, it sounds like, you know, the tight ends can be a little bit more active in this offense than, than maybe it was last year as far as, like, traditional tight ends and so um, I think that's a good thing and we know that Sam Hart is coming in from Ohio State and I think that gives a little glimpse into how this position is viewed during this uh, with this new offense in the sense that Sam Hart is a really good blocking tight end and he can do a few things with his experience as a pass catcher but you move over Savelle Smalls and uh, I know that he caught some passes in high school as well but it seems like physicality is definitely uh, kind of focus at that position whereas again last year you had Mikey Harrison primarily in that role kind of a uh, a pseudo receiver listed as a tight end. Yeah, and and Mikey did a great job. You know, um, you know, really. I mean, he was a game changer a couple times. Uh, I don't think people ever forget the CSU game and the impact he had on that one. But, but yeah, it, it's a different role for these guys. And you know, I asked uh, you know Coach Bartoloni about um, Savelle Smalls and Morgan Pearson moving over from defense, and he he basically said it didn't click for them on defense. And we saw that. And you know, let's just try something else. And and uh, you know, he feels like it's clicking for them more on offense, and that that they're coming along. And obviously, there's a development process there. But both of them caught passes in high school and um, you know it's it's not totally unfamiliar to them and so um, I think th- those are good developmental pieces um, you know that's one thing about a college roster you can do is it's such a big roster that you can take guys like that and say you know what it's not working here let's try it here and we've seen that happen a lot over the years and I'm not saying these guys will become that but maybe the most uh, famous one in our time doing this was Nick Casa, yeah. you know, who was a, a defensive end for a long time and a five-star defensive end that had never really clicked for him on defense, goes over to tight end for his last year, was phenomenal to the point that he got drafted uh, and uh, played in the NFL for a little bit. And so um, I'm not sure Savelle Small is more a pitcher of that. we got to see it first. But you take those chances on a guy like that. And behind us is Louis Passarello, who yeah. – we, we can tend to forget about because he was injured last season, but this is somebody that earned his number from the new staff. And uh, Trevor Woods is the guy that every points to is, is the guy that's the, the, the longstanding holdover. Yeah. Louis Pastorello is as well on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, people forget about him. And, but, yeah, it's, it's those two guys, right? And they're both still here. And, and Lewis has dealt with a lot of injuries in his career, unfortunately. And, um, you know, talking about not clicking, I mean, his body hasn't clicked yet to the point that he can um, stay healthy. And, and you hope he can because, as we're looking at him right here, he's a big tight end, right? And um, he's that big body. He fits that mold. And, and clearly he was doing something last spring to where it impressed his coaching staff to give him a number, you know, when, when that was a thing. And so um, you'd like to see him stay healthy because I think that he is a guy that can help this offense. Coach Bartoloni said he doesn't expect attrition in his room, but he also kind of added the caveat that you never know. It's 2024 and college football, and uh, the portal is open. I'm a little hesitant to talk too much about the individual players, Brian, because I did a podcast yesterday morning. By the time I produced that and got it loaded, already a couple things were outdated because – Things are moving pretty fast in terms of the movement. Uh, Jaden Milliner Jones expected to enter the portal. That's the big surprise so far. Uh, I was telling Jake Schwanitz this as we were waiting for practice to end today. If that's the biggest surprise that's coming down the pike, Colorado's doing just fine. Uh, but it's a roller coaster nowadays. It is. And, you know, there's a lot of factors, you know. I'm sure you get the same thing, but you know, whenever you, you know, something gets announced on Twitter, you get a lot of fans or, or X, whatever you call it. I um, get a lot of fans saying, "What's going on? You know, why, why is this happening?" Like, there's so many factors <laughs> going on for these kids as to why they enter the portal, and it could be uh, guys that are told you're not going to play here. It could be guys that um, just see the writing on the wall. Um, you know, a guy like uh, you know Savion Washington, who, who goes in the portal, was a starting right tackle last year. Well, he probably, I'm, I'm, I don't know. But he might look at it and see, well, they brought in all these offensive linemen. I'm not even starting anymore. Um, he's a starting caliber offensive tackle, and he can go do that somewhere where maybe he doesn't see that here. And so um, you know, that's a lot of it is playing time. There could be NIL factors. There could be 
you know, homesickness, you know, there's, there's a million factors that go into it. Uh, and the bottom line is that this, the system is set up to where it's now easier to do that. And so if guys have that opportunity, they're going to do it. And, um, you know, to your point, yeah, hopefully Jane Milner Jones is the biggest surprise. I mean, that was a tough one because, you know, we've talked about it, one of my favorite young players on this, on this team. And, you know, from that 23 class, um, I, th- I thought he was phenomenal and, and was going to be, um, has star potential. Well, now it's going to probably be somewhere else. But, uh, you know, yeah, if that's, if that's the biggest surprise, you're doing all right. Got to figure out the depth at linebacker. Now have to kind of figure out even more depth at, at, on the offensive line. Probably be in the p- market for a, a backup quarterback to, to battle with Ryan Staub during preseason camp. Uh, but generally, and I said this yesterday as well, leading up to the, the spring transfer portal window, is that it's the big picture, right? Yeah. Every portal window under Coach Prime, Colorado has gotten not just a little bit better, but substantially better. Yeah. And I'd be surprised if that's not again the case. It just it's a process that has to play out, and it's going to play out over the coming weeks. Yeah, you know, and it's going to be interesting to see what they add. And uh, there's going to be more spots. I think it's about eight spots right now, something like that. Um, you need uh, some offensive linemen now too. Um, I think there's only ten offensive linemen, and one of them is. Uh, um, Yaya, who just uh, committed last last week, who we talked about, is a very much a developmental piece, and so it's hard to count on him right now. So that's really only nine guys that you can look at and say, yeah, they're ready to play. Um, so you need some offensive linemen. And with Chaz Wallace leaving, you probably want to get uh, some more depth on the defensive line as well. So, um, yeah, but there's going to be a lot more moving parts, right? And, you know, we're going to see – I don't know how many more, you know, six, seven more. There's going to be guys that move out, but there's going to be a lot of guys that move in. Mentioned Sam Hart. B.J. Green's not on campus yet. Will Shepard's not on campus yet. Cordell Russell's not on campus yet. So there are some already guys that have committed through the portal that are going to join the mix. Uh, But I I don't know. It's hard to predict exactly what's coming down the pike in in this new era. But um, generally – I feel pretty good about the trajectory of this program. Is there anything that would leave concern here in the coming weeks from your eyes? Well, I, th- I think the only thing that would leave concern is if there are bigger surprises than Jade Miller or Jones. I think if you start seeing some guys that we've penciled in, that we've penciled in as you know uh, starters or impact players leaving, then you're like, okay, what's going on? Uh, but uh, for the most part, you know, the guys that are leaving are guys that you look at and say, yeah, that's unfortunate for a death purpose, but. I didn't really see that guy playing a whole lot. And so, uh, and those are understandable in this day and age. So uh, to me, that's, that's the only cause that would that'd be the only cause for concern is if you've see some starting guys that, that start leaving the portal before the portal. And Thursday, we're going to get a chance to talk to Coach Prime again, an, another press conference kind of building up to the spring game. That should be fun. And uh, in, in just in general, uh, again, it's been overshadowed by the portal opening, but this is still a fun time of year. And uh, w- w- in a week and a half, we got the spring game at Folsom Field. And uh, I think everybody's starting to kind of look at that extended forecast at this point. Yeah, I saw somebody uh, tweet out yesterday that uh, looks like a good chance of rain that day. So, you know. I think I'd rather have snow than rain, but, you know, I'm hoping for sunshine, but we'll see. Yeah, but th- this is the time, maybe ticket sales, you know, I, I, CU's ticket office is probably looking at the forecast saying, come on, sun, <laughs> we, we need the sun right, right here. Yeah. So um, I think it'll be interesting to see what ticket sales do based on that forecast as well. All right, Mother Nature, we're calling on you. Next Saturday, we need 65 and sunny, but we'll be back before then on Thursday to break down Coach Prime's press conference.